run the PowerPoint off of memory. So what is a Vocaloid? It's software. It's a software program that you can buy out of a box. Nowadays, you can also download it. And you use the software to um, create music. So the software, the very first ones that were released were in 2005. They were Vocaloids called Leon and Lola. They were released in America, and they, um, sorry, it's hard to do this on my stuff. Uh, they were mostly like, um, for like professional music producers. So they weren't really, uh, what's the, advertised. They weren't advertised to uh, mainstream people. They were advertised mostly to music producers. And, um, it started, it was called the DAISY Project because the very first computer to ever sing was in like the 1960s and it sung the song Daisy Bell. Oh, that's great. It's not even communicating with the thing now. Okay, so it sang the song Daisy Bell, which is why in like Space Odyssey 2001, have y'all seen that movie? He sings the song Daisy Bell in it. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer. That's why Hal sings that song is because it was the very first song a computer ever sung. And so in the late, I guess in the 90s, Yamaha Corporation started the Daisy Bell Project to come up with synthesized vocals and they ended up licensing out that computer stuff to um, what ended up being Krypton Future Media was the first company to do it and then uh, uh, the people who did Leon and Lola were Zero G Studios. So, uh, oh my god, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna speed on through here. Uh, so what is a Vocaloid? Like I mentioned, it's software. So this is an image from Amacobra on DeviantArt. These are all the different Vocaloids that are out there. There may be more at this point, but um, this is how many Vocaloids there are, more or less. So, um, as I mentioned, it was in 1961. This was the very first computer that ever um, sang, and it sang the song Daisy Bell. And this was a video that played the song, but at this point, I'm just glad to have my PowerPoint. So we're gonna move right along. Oh wait, I think it's gonna play. That's okay, moving on. Yes? So overall, a uh, Vocaloid is pretty much a uh, pretty much a software that actually produces a person to a person to sing, right? Yes. So these were the first Vocaloids I mentioned, Leon and Lola, and in 2004 by Zero G Studios. These were the ones that were not advertised to everyday people. These were advertised to like professional music producers for like backup singers and such. You don't need to buy or you know, not buy, but. Higher. Higher, thank you. <laughs> Hire a backup singer, you can just use this software. Um, they were released in America, and then Krypton Media, that other company, they did Meko and Kaito in Japan. And they were very successful because they were the first Vocaloids that had an image to them, was Meko and Kaito. And um, Meko was very successful at first, Kaito wasn't quite as successful the first run, um, well, like the first release. So th these were the, all the, like the very original Vocaloids. Um, these are also considered the V1 Vocaloids, uh, version one. Uh, Zero G also released a third Vocaloid named Miriam, and she had kind of an image, but it was like a picture of a person. It wasn't like a cute kind of anime style that these ones had. So um, now we have the Vocaloid 2 engine. So at this point, Krypton Media has kind of figured out what they're doing. And um, this is when they released Hatsune Miku in 2008. Um, Sweet Anne is the next release by Zero G Studios. This is her original box art. Everyone jokes that it's nightmare fuel because she looks like she's like, you know, in the fiery depths of hell or whatnot compared to, you know, Hatsune Miku is looking very friendly and fun. And so when Miku comes out as a V2 Vocaloid, this is also why there's no Miku V1. She literally doesn't exist. V2 was the very first Hatsune Miku. Um, so this is when Kaito kind of got a resurgence 
when people were saying Riku, and then they're like, oh, there's also a male vocaloid, Kaito. He sounds great. So um, this is kind of what the software will look like. So, and I apologize, the um, PowerPoint's kind of cut off on the side, but on the side here, it looks like little piano notes. I don't know if you can tell, but they use phonetics to create words. So A-E-I-O-U is an example. If you study English, then you know those are vowel sounds. If you study Japanese at all, you might recognize the hiragana and katakana charts. They A-I-E-U-E-O. Um, so the Japanese language is actually kind of like based on phonetics entirely, and that's how they create their words, which is why some people might say that Japanese vocals sound better or they're easier, versus English has way more phonetics like so many more and so that's why sometimes words might not sound as great when they're in English but they're constant I mean they've been working on this technology for a while but this is basically what they're doing they are um, using the you know the phonetic which are the pieces of words to combine them and then they're putting them musically on the scale what note they want it to say and that's how the songs are created and this is the software that people are buying that have the this is the Vocaloid software. Um, so the Krypton Vocal Character Series. Um, these are the ones, these are like, you know, the, the golden children of Vocaloid, so to speak. Uh, since Krypton first released uh, Mecco and Kaito, they just, they just kind of knew what they were doing more so than some of the other Vocaloid uh, releasers. And so they came up with the Vocal Character Series so Miku is number one in the series. Rin and Len are number two. They're released as one set, so that's why they're both number two. Um, they stand for the right and left of a headphone set, the RL, so a lot of people don't know that. And they were considered a good deal at the time because you got two for one. And then Luca was the third one, and she was considered the English-speaking Vocaloid at the time for like Japan. And then, um, Mecco and Kaito are not in the Krypton vocal series because they were released first before they had a series, which is why they don't have a number. And it's why they're pretty, when their names are typed, they're always in all caps. So, because they were their own different thing. Um, but those are all the Krypton vocaloids. Any questions so far? Cool. Um, so this is a video that's supposed to show how the software works, but you know, I just don't know if that's going to happen today, unfortunately. Uh, this is the song. Oh, maybe it'll happen. I'm going to try it because I really like this song. The song is called Just Be Friends. This is Luca V3. So in V3, you can see her dress kind of got a redesign. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, this is V4. V4 just came out. And V4X included things that they call growl. So that has like the... Uh, sound that you'll hear like a singer make when they breathe in to sing, and that makes the, the song sound a lot more realistic, because there's a lot more of those human kind of sounds that we just naturally make when we breathe and sing and such. And again, I'm sorry, I just don't think the video's gonna happen. Um, but again, this, this was just an example of that page I showed before with how the software looks when it's actually being used. Moving right along, the origination of the leak spin. So a lot of people see Hatsune Miku and she has a leak, right? And you know, she has that, that song, Live on Coca. Um, originally, it was, and again, I apologize for no video. The original meme video was uploaded on September 2006, and it was a shot from the first episode of Bleach. Or a he makes carrying groceries home, and I guess like the main character. Do you know who it is? Uh, Ichigo Kurosaki. Also, that I think that's from the second or third episode of the first. Okay. Well, I apologize, but it's from one of the early episodes of Bleach, where or he may gets knocked into by somebody, and she spills all her groceries and she picks them up, and she's like, "No, no, I'm fine." And she kind of spins the leak for a second, and so somebody, you know, grabs that gif or you know whatever that video and repeated it and put the song the live on coca song the yeah um so they just like looped it 
And so somebody who had, so the producer Ochomania, who had the Miku Vocaloid software, did a Miku version of the song and uploaded this, this video in 2007 of Miku singing the song and spinning the leak. And that's kind of how it became her character item because that exploded <laughs> on the internet. And this is why the internet can't have nice things. So, if anybody ever wants to know about the leak spin or why that's a thing. Um, so here is all the V2 engines that were released. So V1 was just Mecco and Kaito and then Leon and Lola and then Miriam who I didn't have on the PowerPoint. But here we can see that there's a lot of them now. So Miku, these are in release order, Miku and Sweet Anne, and then Rin and Lin. They had two releases because their first release was pushed so fast, there were a lot of bugs. So they released an updated one in 2008. Prima, um, she was actually like an opera type singer. She was by Zero G Studios, I believe, the same one who did Leon and Lola. Um, Camus, oh, I'm not saying his name right, but uh, Kamui Gakko, he's the samurai one. Um, he was released by the same company that did Gumi. I, it's Internet Co. was their company. And they had a lot of confusion because they named the software, so Gakpoid and Megpoid, they named the software, and then they named the Vocaloid. So there's a lot of confusion. People will call Gumi Megpoid and They'll get them all mixed up, but that's kind of on the studio. Their real names are Gumi and Gakpo. Um, Gumi is in the Project Mirai games for the 3DS, the Project Diva. So then we have Luca, Sonica. She's popular. She's pretty popular. And then a bunch of these other ones. Um, so the Miku append and the Rin Lin append, those were. Um, additional sound banks that gave them like, you know, softer sound, you know, rougher sound, so dark sound, um, light. So there are like five different um, extra sounds that they had. So, moving right along. So the Project Diva game series, this is how a lot of people know Project Diva. This is how I personally got into Project Diva. Um, I super love rhythm games. I've loved them since DVR and Type of Drum Master. And um, elite Beat Agents, a lot of people play Osu now, but that's pretty much Elite Beat Agents, but better. Here's all the games that have been released so far. So they started in 2009, a year after um, her, uh, sorry, her software came out. And they, so the first one was on the PSP, it was just called Project Diva, and then they came out with, sorry, probably in the way, I don't need to stand. Um, they came out with Dreamy Theater, which is basically the same game but on the PS3. And you had to buy the game for both systems, and you had to link them together, like with the cord. Like you had to physically connect them to play, and you had to do that every time. For Project Diva Second, it was the same thing, but you only had to link them once, and then it was linked forever. Um, and then Extend, same thing. And those were only Japan releases. I actually have a Japanese PSN account because I got the second one. Um, at this point, I wouldn't recommend going through all that unless you really want the games because they've got a lot of those. These ones have not been released in America. Uh, we also have Project Mirai and Project Mirai 2. Those are for the 3DS. But the American release, Project Mirai DX, basically is like Project Mirai 2, but better. <laughs> Um, so I, there's really no point to buy this game because it's kind of like, you know, when Kingdom Hearts did those like final mixes, but in the American release, they, they put all that stuff on the American release already. Um, so the worldwide releases, the ones you would be able to get the English versions of are F and F second. They're on the, I think F originally was just a download game and then it was popular enough that X. F second got a physical release. I personally download my games. I know a lot of people like to have the physical copies. Um, Mirai DX has a physical copy. Project Diva X is the one that was just released on the PS4, also on the Vita. And then Project Diva Future Tone is the arcade version of the game. So she has a 
you know, like a stand-up arcade game, and that's Project Eva Future Tone. It was released in two parts, Future Sound and Colorful Tone. So it's like you buy the, the game is free, and it comes with two songs, and then you buy the giant DLC packs, and you can do Future Sound or Colorful Tone, or both. And then I know that there has been official DLC that is being released in America right now. I think it's three packs, and America has one pack right now. I think Japan has two or all of them. I bought the Japanese version of this game because I didn't think there would be any way it would be an American release because we don't have the arcade game. But it got an American release, which is great. There's a booth downstairs that has it. You can play it in the dealer's room. It's the dealers. Say hi. Support their shop. Um, those are all the games. Any questions about the games? They're very fun. Again, um, it's set up. Project Diva F Second for the PS3 is set up in the, in the actual arcade room, and they have the actual arcade controller. It's very cool. So Vocaloid derivatives. You'll see these a lot when you're playing the games or like in fan art and things. These are fan-created versions of characters. Um, <laughs> The ones I have here and that you'll see in the games are officially recognized by Krypton. So that's Miku, where she has like the weird legs. Is I believe Shiku Nyando. Who knows? The, like this is the internet, not able to have nice things is what a lot of these are. Um, Larval Rin, Luke, like Taco Luca. Um, the three in the center that look like actual vocaloids, I, the one with the red pigtails, I believe her name is like Connie Tetso. 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 And um, she started as a derivative, which is when they would like pitch the voices up way high or way low, or they would just distort the software so much it didn't sound like the character. And so the fans like made characters for these sounds. And so that's, they don't have voice banks, but since then, Teto does have a voice bank and what is called a Utalboid instead of a Vocaloid, and that's basically like free software. So it's like the freeware version of Vocaloids. And so some people call them the Utalboids, but Teto does have an actual voice bank now. And then the one on the side that looks like Meko, um, that's Sekai Meko. When she first came out, they couldn't decide what age Meko should be, if she was older or younger. So they kind of came out with this younger design. But by that time, Miku came out, and nobody really cared anymore because everyone loved Miku. So this is like the younger version of Meko. She's not knockoff Meko or you know um, bootleg Meko. She's an official, real character. She just doesn't have a voice bank. She's the younger version of Meko. So if you see her, here is her. Uh, so we're gonna move right along. These are all the B three Vocaloid voice voice. Thanks. Um, Kaito got a, re a V3. Miku. I think pretty much all the Krypton Vocaloids got a V3. Um, I believe Aya, right above Kaito, Aya is released in V3. Um, we're going to talk about her a little bit later. Uh, you can see Gumi got a new release. You can see there's a lot more now. A lot of people are really like you know, starting to use this software and come up with characters. Um, and then here's V4. I believe V4 is the most recent one as of today. So um, you'll see not every Vocaloid gets continued releases. I know Miku has a V4. And that's why you'll see sometimes her outfits get a little bit of a redesign, a little bit of an update. Her pigtails are a lot smaller in V4. Like, they're still as long, but they're not as, like, poofy, which I actually appreciate because Realism. She was in a shampoo commercial in Japan. Like Hatsune Miku and Scarlett Johansson were in a shampoo commercial. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy. So um, live concerts. Uh, the first first live Vocaloid concert was in 2009, which was a couple years after Miku was released. She sang two songs during the summer live at the Satima Super Arena in Japan, and then in 2010 she did her first like full performance, it was the 39's Giving Day. If you ever play the games or know anything about Miku, you'll see the number 39 a lot. And the significance of that is 39 in Japanese is pronounced Sankyu, which sounds like thank you in English. And so it also, there's another pronunciation of it where it, there's like another way to pronounce the number three and it sounds like Miku. 
Um, so that's why 39 is important, because it's thank you, and then it's also like me you. So you'll see that a lot. Um, so I believe that the official like March, March 9th is like, you know, giving day or like meet you day. So on March 9th, you may see. Last year, some like fans got a billboard for the whole month of March and like had a meet you billboard about meet you day. So her first appearance in the USA was in 2011 in LA. I believe it coincided with the Anime Expo. Um, and there's DVD and Blu-ray versions of this concert that they filmed. And then there is also uh, the album is on Amazon and iTunes. Um, I really like it. I have this album. If you're looking to kind of get started, I kind of recommend this place to start. She also was on David Letterman's dress. I know, wasn't that like 2014 when she did it? Yeah, so in 2014, she came as part of the Miku Expo, which right now, it sounds like the Miku Expos are doing every other year in America. They're every year in Japan that she does a Miku Expo. But in 2004, she did Miku Expo and she came to LA and New York. And when she came to New York, she had an appearance on Letterman. And it was hilarious because Letterman had no idea what was going on. He really was just didn't know. Um, which a lot of people don't know what a Vocaloid is. They really have no idea because it is, it's software, but it's, um, you know, Krypton has done all this technology into having her, you know, live with the, you know, the hologram type technology or what people call it. I think it's called like projection mapping is what it actually is called. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. But um, this is the Vocaloid Aya. She is, uh, the first and only Vocaloid from First Place Company. Uh, she's notable for being part of the AYA project, which I actually haven't done too much research on that. Um, but she has very realistic sounding vocals, which is why people tend to like her so much. And so she was first released as a V3 voice bank. And um, she has her own rhythm game as well, the AYA VT Colorful. Um, you can it's for the PS Vita. Uh, probably the easiest way to play it would just be to order a physical copy and pop it into your Vita and play it. Um, the problem, because I, I like to download all my games, and the Vita is like, once you log into a PlayStation account, it's like locked to your PlayStation account. You have to factory reset the thing to go into your, a Japanese PSN account, versus like on the 3 and the 4, you can just log out of your English PSN account and log into your Japanese account. But the Vita, you have to like factory reset the darn thing. And so some people will have like a Japanese memory card and an English memory card. But anyway, I, I just, I really like downloading my games. I don't really like to have physical copies anymore. Um, so some upcoming content events in 2017. The first one, I'm, I, God, I wish I could go so bad. I've never been to Japan, but um, it, it's this Koto. She's gonna be performing with Taiko drummers which I think is going to be so cool. Um, so it's part of the Tokyo Olympic official program, which I'm honestly not sure what exactly that means, but I think they're trying to like spread Japanese culture, getting people hyped for the 2020 Olympics. Um, she's going to perform with the Japanese drumming group Kodo. Yeah, I don't spread Japan culture. And then she's doing Miku Symphony in 2017. She did one in 2016, and it's an orchestral concert. And um, so they play all of Miku's songs, but they play them, you know, orchestrally with the full symphony orchestra. Yes. Uh, do you know when that uh, orchestra is going to be? What month? I don't think they've released the date yet because um, it, you know, the internet research I did, I found this one, it's coming soon. Um, there's a YouTube video of like kind of snippets of it. Uh, YouTube ha Miku has an official YouTube channel. And I follow it, and she'll, they'll post a lot of stuff on there. And um, I actually bought the physical CD from um, CD Japan, I believe. Um, but yeah, that is probably going to be pretty cool. <coughs> I listened to the symphony, and it was cool. And I think she had a few appearance, like you know, projection appearances as well. Uh, so Miku at home. There is currently in. Um, they're working on, in Japan, a thing called the gate buttons. <coughs> it's kind of like, I guess, an Alexa or, because uh, Amazon and Google have one, right? Is it the Amazon Alexa? Yes. And what one is the Google? Home. Is 
Google Home. Okay, well, it's basically like that, but then there's a little projection of, a, you know, of the character, the person inside. And so um, they held a demo during her Magical Mirai 2016 concert. So pretty much every year in Japan right now, she's doing an expo, usually in the uh, spring time. And then she, well, no, I don't know. Honestly, I don't even know what time of the year, but she usually does the Miku Expo and she'll do a Magical Mirai concert. She started doing that. The Magical Mirai concerts are actually pretty cool. And a lot of times at the concerts in Japan, they'll have almost like a kind of convention, you know, they'll have this big area set up and people can go and draw and do activities and see a bunch of stuff on display. And this is one of the things they finally had on display was the gate box featuring Hatsune Miku. And um, so it does all that standard kind of home stuff that you'd come to expect from these little at-home Bluetooth boxes, but then also she could do apparently concerts and things like that. So I'm keeping an eye on the gate box. We'll see how far that goes. This is a video that shows how it works, but we all know how the videos are going today, so I apologize. If you really want to see it, you can always YouTube search gate box. And this is like the little demo, the little person you know, welcome home, and like apparently she can text message your phone and stuff and be like, oh, I hope to see you soon, and things like that, so. Uh, this is a new game, VR Future Live, so the PlayStation VR that's come out, Miku has a game where it's basically like going to a concert, and so you can watch her do, um, there's three different stages you can buy, and the stages have different songs, so you'll pick you know, like three out of 10 songs and she'll perform them and you watch it in VR. I think it's really cool because I super love Vocaloid and future stuff. Uh, VR is like $500 right now, <laughs> the, the box. So it's kind of expensive, plus you gotta play the game. But if you have PlayStation VR and you like Hatsune Miku, I would definitely look into it. And if you have it, call me so I can come over and see it. Um, okay, so Vocaloid controversy. Is she a singer or an instrument? Um, there's no real answer to this question. It's just one that gets brought up a lot um, because outside in Japan, um, outside of Japan, she, Vocaloids tend to be sold as singers, but inside Japan, they um, regard it as an instrument. Um, and then also, you know, the media won't report Vocaloid correctly, like in David Letterman, he's like, I don't even know what this was, <laughs> you know, at the end, you can kind of see he's like waving to her, like, okay, you know, because a lot of people, and for, I have a little sister and she like doesn't get it at all, but I tell her, I'm like, it's not that she is a real person, I know she's not real, Hatsune Miku knows she's not real, she sings there's a really cool song she does in English called Glass Wall, where she's singing about how she's always stuck behind the glass wall, and the only thing that can get through is her voice. And that's a really cool song, because anytime you would see her, it's behind, it's behind a screen of some sort. Even at her concert, you can kind of see the little screen that's there. Um, and then there's the song Disappearance of Hatsune Miku, where she's literally like trying to break out, and then there's like a data corruption, and she disappears. And it's all cool. I think it's all very cool. Um, but yeah, so media won't report it correctly and it just causes more confusion to what Vocaloid is and what it means to people and, you know, the concerts and things like that. So, not that there's an answer, it's just something I like to kind of bring up and talk to people about. Um, so the Hatsune Miku phenomenon, um, this is a statement from the official Vocaloid site. Uh, from Krypton Media. Um, so she's traveled an interesting path from Vocaloid synthesizer to, you know, collaborative community. And Krypton really, like, they love the collaborative community and they really try to encourage people to, you know, have Miku and make her whatever they, you know, want her to be or need her to be, so to speak. Um, so I just think it's really cool that. You know, a lot of these companies, they are, you know, a lot of companies when they release a character, they're very possessive of their character and they don't want people to, you know, mess with it. But with Vocaloids and Miku, they're very much like, this is your character too. And, you know, they let people be really creative with it. So, 
Um, where to buy Vocaloid? There's tons and tons of merch out there. Oh, but this, sorry, this is like the software. So if you're interested in picking up the software and maybe making some music, uh, Vocaloid.com for any English releases. Um, and then if you're interested in like the Krypton one specifically, Krypton, this is their web page. Um, most people just buy it off Amazon, buy the physical copy off Amazon. But um, like Vocaloid.com, you could download a lot of the software if you're interested in it at all. Uh, so Vocaloid resources, again, at UshiCon, the games are set up, one in the official game room, part of at second, and then downstairs, one of the vendors uh, set up a copy as well of the arcade version. Um, so, oops. No, stop it. Sorry, y'all. Oh, now this one. Uh, sorry, my computer crashed. <laughs> um, but let me see if I can get it back up. Okay, very good. Uh, so, Vocaloid websites, there's a Vocaloid wiki page that has like everything about Vocaloid. Uh, Vocaloidnews.net has a lot of you know upcoming merchandise releases, concert releases, things like that, anything that's happening. And then MikuFan.com is kind of specific to Miku and the Krypton Vocaloids, but they'll get into more of the whole community. And then if you want to buy anything Vocaloid, um, CD Japan has a lot of the like books, kind of the media stuff, books, albums, uh, Blu-rays and DVDs of concerts. Uh, sometimes they have like the figures and things like that. Uh, PlayAsia.com will have a lot of stuff. You'll pay a lot for shipping from them, but if you really want it, uh, Play Asia was, is where I got my Hori controller when it first came out. And then Good Smile Company, they do a lot of the figures, like the Nendroids, like not, not just the Miku Nendroids, but like any Nendroids, that's all Good Smile Company. They do uh, the racing Mikus. Every year there's like a racing Miku and a snow Miku that comes out. Um, so those are all good places to go. And that's pretty much it, y'all. I'm so sorry for all the tech problems. I'm so glad you all stuck around and listened to me talk about Vocaloid. If you, ever, if you have any questions, I'm gonna hang out in the hallway for a bit. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you all so much for coming.